For question number eight, the correct option is option number three. And to show the steps of solution, let me draw a quick figure here. This is a circular path followed by the particle. And for the circle, radius is r. Suppose this is a particle moving anti-clockwise with a constant linear speed that is a constant angular velocity. I call this angular velocity as omega a constant for a constant linear speed or uniform motion. Radius is r and this is the center of the circle and this is the force acting on the particle, a central force. We are calling this force as Fc vector and with this figure let us see what they have said in the question. In step number one they have said this central force is inversely proportional to the nth power of radius r. So that is Fc varying as 1 upon r to the power n. Once again, Fc is central force. Radius is r followed by this particle under this force with a constant angular speed of omega, say. So you can write from here that Fc is equal to a proportionality constant divided by r to the power n. That is my equation number one. Next, what is the acceleration of this particle in circular motion? I show this by a tiny red arrow and this we call it AC, radial centripetal acceleration. As you have learnt in theory classes, this centripetal acceleration can be expressed as v squared by r where v is the linear speed or alternatively as we learnt in circular motion as omega square into r. I shall choose the second one for variety. AC is equal to omega square r, omega being the constant angular speed of revolution and capital R is the radius of the circular path traveled by the particle. This is my equation number two. In my next step, that is step number two, I can simply apply Newton's second law of motion to write down this central force must be mass into this acceleration, isn't it? So Fc is equal to mass of the particle into its acceleration, that is Ac. Now using equation number 1 and 2 and putting the values of Fc and Ac, we can write here, equation number 1 and 2 being used, Fc is k, the constant by r to the power n that is equal to m into, let me write AC as omega square into r. That is my equation number 3, say. And you can already see that you have got an equation involving r, the radius of the circle, and the angular velocity that is omega, but the question involves time period. So recalling from circular motion theory classes, we remember that time period of revolution of a particle in a circle with constant speed, constant angular speed, that time period is 2 pi upon omega, which can be written down as omega is equal to 2 pi by t. I'm going to replace this omega in equation number 3 by the expression. So therefore, in my next step, in equation number 3, you can write down from equation number 3, that is k upon r to the power n is equal to m into omega square into r that was, now m into substitute omega by 2 pi upon t, t being time period, that is whole squared into r. This is giving me 4 pi square m into r by t square, isn't it? 
a little rearrangement we can write well we have got k upon r to the power n is equal to 4 pi square m r by t square and therefore we can write t square is equal to 4 pi square into m divided by k into r to the power n plus 1. Just verify my steps. In my next step square rooting both sides we can write that t is equal to twice pi square root of m by k into r to the power n plus 1 by 2. See the power here is n plus 1 by 2 of r and this whole quantity let me use a different ink this quantity is self a constant isn't it let me call that k dash i'm coming once again 2 pi square root of m by k is a constant because pi is a constant of value 3.14 m is the mass of the particle k is a constant of proportionality already assumed earlier therefore the whole thing is a constant k dash and therefore you can write in the next step that the time period of revolution of the particle t varying directly as r to the power n plus 1 by 2 and that is the option 3 given in the question and that is our choice.